our lives and had fun. I forgot there is this new petty hate machine called Tumblr. <laughs> oh my god. By the time that I got home from Chicago, just two days later, there were like pages of people like sharing. I love the way people share things on Tumblr because that's going to change the world. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share them. I'm going to share it. And they were like, People saying the most hysterically funny things about me, like, uh, there's like, I was a homestuck hater. Get ready, I was homophobic. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, my boyfriend is gonna be so pissed when he finds out. Uh, I was transphobic, which I have an ex-boyfriend that's now an ex-girlfriend, so that's not possible. Like, and uh, so I finally had to find my one sane homestuck friend and go, OMG, WTF, BBQ, PPL, like what the hell is this? And we got in this really funny discussion about like fandoms and fandoms that go awry. So I would like to thank my trolls because it was the beginning of like what's been a really fun panel to do. So like, uh, I'm gonna get you guys to help me out for a little bit. How many of you are like just hardcore fans of something, something you love, which is probably everybody that paid a lot of money to get in here this week, uh, Like, okay. Now, of those of you that have your hands up, how many of you have that friend that is a little crazy about a fandom or two? <laughs> Here's the embarrassing one. How many of you are that person? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, at least you guys are honest. That's awesome. So many people on stage are like, not me. I don't like Italia. So, uh, Get it. Uh, so that's the funny thing. Like I, I'm always fascinated about how we are drawn to anime and we get so fanatical about some things, and yet sometimes amongst us we have bared witness to our fandoms going horribly off the rails. So now, before I start taking questions, in just a moment I'm going to ask you for some of the nuttier fandoms. For the sake of this conversation only, we're going to exclude BBC, Harry Potter, the whole science fiction realm, and just worry about anime, because there is plenty of crazy there to go around for everybody. Because you can say Doctor Who, you can say, there's a million, you can say Firefly, uh, you can say a million, but we're going to talk about, so, what are some of the most fanatically wanky and weird fandoms that you know of in the anime? Industry. Yes. Oh, you're pointing over your shoulder. Your father told me you're volunteering him. He's like, what? Oh, okay. He's already been through this. Like, yeah. And I'm so glad somebody said that because I had somebody in this panel one time who was like, that I did hate what who they were hate they hated ponies. Look, I hate my little pony. It has nothing to do with anime. I'm like, well, what are you a big fan of? And he's like. Evangelion, and I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Do you know their whole thesis is written on Evangelion? That's somebody that's taking themselves way too seriously. Evangelion has a history of nutty fandom. Definitely, definitely. Uh, what's another one? Yes. Death Note. Death Note does. Death Note doesn't have it as bad as it was, but like three years ago, a little crazy. Yeah. Naruto. I have those guys. It's FMA, Naruto, and Bleach all in one line because they fall under the same type of fandom wank. Yeah. Black Butler. Black Butler. Thank you. It's like, it's the actual horror story that we end this panel with. So yes, it's the bottom of the list, but by far not the wankiest. Uh, but it, it is definitely up there in, in wankdom. What else? Yeah. Oh, One Piece, yes. I was pointing at you, but yes, no, that's my One Piece. I'm not too sure about real life, but on Tumblr, we can mention these go and Hachi was sort of playing Really? So people get, wait, people get butthurt over Michiko and Hachi on Tumblr? Wait, it's Tumblr. <laughs> it's called the Petty Hate Machine for a reason. Yeah, people argue about, like, how to spell Tumblr on Tumblr, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online. I, you know what? It got really, like the fever pitch on the wink got pretty hard on that last year, and then this year it's been kind of chill. Like I haven't seen super super weirdness. Because it's a starting. That's why. I'm t okay. So now I need your help. I'm talking about real wanky fandom. Somebody help me out. And you can't say home stuff because I already said home stuff. So that's on the list. Uh, yeah. Yes. Jojo Romantica, that's for the Yaoi panel. Uh, no, I mean like all-star style fandom craziness. Yes, in the back. Free! Free, yes. Wait, okay, I gotta ask, how many free fans in here? Yeah. Okay. Is it just me, or are they dancing in a gay bar at the end of that credits? I distinctly see no women in that credit sequence, and a lot of leather harnesses. I was watching it, I'm like, Uh, <laughs> Y'all missed that joke from earlier, yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah, in the back, the very back. Or in high school. Or in high school, I don't, have that. I don't have that listed here, but it definitely, I've got, I've got a great story about uh, what happens when you accuse a twin of being gay on a panel. I'll tell you that story in a minute. Because <laughs> I may or may not have drunkenly said on a panel that I thought Kaori Hitachi is gayer than Liberace. <laughs> It's my character, so, uh, but I got a very funny letter I'll tell you about later. Yeah, there's, uh, some, there's some people that get real crazy about Oran, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sailor. Sailor, oh, especially right now. <laughs> I can't stand the new Sailor Moon. Why do they look like they have rubber band arms? Oh man, when the new Sailor Moon, when, when Crystal premiered, ooh, don't get near the internet. Like, <laughs> Super weird. Uh, yeah. Fairy tale. Fairy tale. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Anything that's on TV definitely gets that treatment. Like uh, anything that you can tune in and watch. That's why y'all haven't gotten it. I'm sh I'm shocked y'all haven't said this when it was on TV. It's like the mother of all anime. Yes. That's, no, that's not the mother of all. That's what's right this second. Uh, Sorry, Titan fans, which I now call Titan fans walnuts, right? <laughs> walnuts. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Walnuts. Yes, if you haven't seen the show, you won't get that joke, but yeah. Inuyasha, or for the people that miss Ranma, yes. Uh, I have, in fact, there's a whole section where I talk about an Inuyasha joke in just a minute. So Inuyasha is definitely in that list. And it's funny because... Uh, Richard Cox did something that was kind of its own Inuyasha joke a little while ago, so I might tell that in a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, put me, yeah. Oh, what? No, I was putting him. I'm sorry, both y'all pointed at your head. I was like, going like this, and they were both doing it. Yes? Uh, I got two, Pokemon and Dragon Ball universe. Dragon Ball is the one I was talking about. When my, when my brother got cast in the role of Frieza, I even told him, I'm like, dude, Get ready. You're going to meet the most intense level of fan you have ever met. And he's like, well, that's cool. And I was like, and you're going to get some of the strangest fan art ever. And he didn't believe me until FedEx arrived at my parents' house. And there was a framed, framed, glass framed photo or drawing of Frieza laying on a jukebox dressed as Columbia from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, so we're about to do an 18 plus panel. I was asked that dumb question you always get asked in an uncensored panel. If you could have sex with any anime character, what would it be? And I was like, ugh. And so I was gonna say Kenshin and just make all the Yaoi fans squeal. And then I was like, no, I wouldn't do it, but I would pay money for Vegeta to take, I think it was Pikachu. No, it was Jigglypuff actually. Cause I love Jigglypuff. There was a lot of crying <laughs> from this one. It's like, no, Tingly Papa, not like a really upset. Tingly <laughs> Puff is not real. <laughs> it's just 
often. Uh, so yeah, so Pokemon and Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z are right up there. Okay, so okay, let me go through the list because I know there's one. I can't believe no one has guessed. Homestuck, Italia, FMA Renard, Tuck Leach, Black Butler, and there's one, come on. Full Metal Alchemist. Huh? Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist, I said that. It's FMA, Naruto, and Leech all in one. Whoa, everybody talking at once, everybody's talking at the same time. What? Gundam. Gundam. That was the old fan wank. Thank you. <laughs> Gundam is what people used to fight about a long time ago. No, I'll give you a hint. They're cute, and they have colored manes, and they clippity-cloppity what? Little Pony. I can't believe nobody mentioned MLP. Jesus. The what? What? It's obvious, yes. Okay, it is. Okay. So, let me talk about, like, okay, since we've gotten on some of the bigger ones, uh, let me talk about the kinds of stuff that I'm talking about. Like, I made a joke earlier about an Inuyasha joke. Because I have, okay, so I hang out with, I know, this is going to be shocking, nerds, uh, when I'm at home. And I have these two friends that are like Inuyasha special like everything relates to Inuyasha all the time and so we will be in public somewhere and someone a stranger will say something to us and one of my friends Dana goes oh that's what Kagome and I'm like what did you do don't mind her. So we now jokingly call those Inuyasha jokes. Anytime there's something within your fandom that the rest of the world doesn't get, we call it an Inuyasha joke. So my first story is about Italian fandom and an Inuyasha joke of their own. So when I first, when, as an actor, I get asked to audition for things. Italian is one of the first shows that I didn't want to work on because it is so racist, because it is so horrifyingly racist, and while I get the point of it, it's supposed to be so racist, it's ridiculous, and it's supposed to call attention to how dumb all that is. I knew there would be a younger group of fans with no context to compare it to, and sure enough, it happened. So, I also staff a lot of conventions, and I won't say the name of this convention, although if you find the video version of this panel, I accidentally said it, so it's on the internet anyway. Needless to say, I was at a very large convention on the East Coast that I work for, and at this convention I wear a, a headset, which means I can listen to, I can monitor security stuff, because I have to wear it for the rave. Well, Sunday, in the middle of the day, we started getting all of these calls about an emergency at the waterfront. The waterfront is like seven to ten miles away from the convention center. So I'm like, what is going on at the waterfront? And so I was like, Maybe we're just picking up police signal or something. Like maybe there's some bleed through. And they're like, uh, they're wanting to talk to the convention chairman now. Who? I'm like, who? The police. I'm like, what is going on? So, a group of in uh, Inuyasha, a group of Italian fans who were dressed as Germany. don't have to finish the story for you, do I? <laughs> Decided that they were going to once upon a time have a photo shoot down by the waterfront. Do you want to guess what else is down by the waterfront in Boston? Come on, somebody guess. Uh, all across the museum. Thank you. He's got on the first try. Somebody always goes, Denny's? Like... <laughs> who were dressed as men, because they were dressed as, you know, uh, Germany, Heiling Hitler. Oh, oh yeah, I, like, just keep throwing salt on the wound, why don't you care? Here's the problem. Aside from that being horrifically offensive, our Holocaust Memorial in Boston is directly across the street from the largest seafood tourist trap in the entire city, with floor-to-ceiling windows. I jokingly say this all the time, and Bostonians know I'm not being, I'm not saying this with a mean ill will, but there are four things, or three things Bostonians take seriously. Drinking, fighting, and history. And not necessarily in that order, but some days. Very quickly, these four young women were surrounded by men that wanted to fight them. 
fight them, like fist fight them. Uh, and very quickly it became like a very dangerous situation. Uh, luckily, the young ladies did not go to jail. Uh, sure, they got in a lot of trouble when they got home. One of them was like only 16. So yeah, I'm sure mom and dad weren't real proud of their daughter that day. Uh, but here's the thing that blows my mind. All of them had friends. And you know, one of them told a friend, and they're like, oh, yeah, do that. <laughs> so here's my new rule. If you have an idea that you think is really funny, go find a responsible adult <laughs> and tell them about it. And tell them with all the vim and enjoyment that you think it's going to be. And then recoil in horror as they ask you, what are you high? Uh, because no adult in their right mind would ever think that was a good idea, ever. Uh, and so, like, a, that started this big debate as to whether or not, like, on the East Coast, there was this huge debate as to whether or not we should even allow people to cosplay as characters from a historical time period whose context is offensive. Um, anybody in here lived in Europe at all? Like, anybody spent any time or studied in Europe or lived in Europe? No, two, yay, three! So you know that the visual imagery behind a swastika in general is heavily guarded in the European like unions. So you cannot display it for any reason unless it's in a museum and there is some historical context to it. You cannot just fly a Nazi flag. Nor can you dress up as a character and wear a Nazi armband unless you're Prince Harry, who apologized but is wrong. Uh, it's Harry, he's the baby, he's always going to be in trouble. Uh, but uh, it's a big deal to even display an image like that. And the reason it came up a second time is we were at a convention in DC and an elderly woman was passed by someone cosplaying as Schrodinger from Helsing Ultimate. Not only is it a little Nazi, but he's a wolf. <laughs> And she locked herself in her room. She thought she was seeing things. She really, she didn't want, she hadn't seen Half Naked Sailor Moon earlier. That was her first costume. That was the first thing she saw. So the interesting thing is when this conversation started, we said, well, you know, there's no reason to outlaw cosplaying characters, but why can't you do it interestingly? Our favorite replacement for a swastika was a Hello Kitty and Crossbones. It was like, we voted that most creative, you know, replacement. But like, Pink Floyd the Wall did it with two hammers and everybody figured out. So there's like, I think there should be a way you can do that. And, and that's like an example of an in-joke. Since we're talking about in-jokes, uh, and there's several other Italian horror stories, but I'm gonna try to skip ahead because I've got new material on this panel. Uh, when we talk about in-jokes, I also talk about Homestuck fans. Uh, and I'm gonna come back to Homestuck fans a few times. Um, Homestuck fans, where are you? Like, there's some of you in the room. I know at least two. I've seen at least two. There's a few. So, you guys know, of course, about the bucket, right? Now, somebody told me, is this true? That video was actually filmed in Boston, across the street. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. So, somebody who knows the story, tell the lovely viewing audience, and I won't make you explain the bucket, because that would just be too traumatizing to everybody. This is your homework. Find a Homestuck fan and ask about the bucket. <laughs> you won't be bored, I promise you. So, tell somebody who is a bear witness to this video, tell them what's on the video. Suddenly no one's seen this video. <laughs> yes, you raised your hand. You were it. Oh, I have some friends, but I know a bit more about it. But as far as I know, it was a few people thought it would be a really funny idea to go out of the restaurant, spit into a bucket, and then have one person that they did spit all the spit. Yes, but that's not what happens in the video, is it? The bucket gets spilled a little bit, too. Yes, but that was the whole gist. A group of people, here we go, in a public restaurant, all spitting into a bucket and are going to pay someone to drink it. I think most management at most restaurants would come up and say, what, are you high? That's like the resounding answer to most of this. What, are you high? No, you cannot come into our restaurant and spit in a bucket. Um, yeah, there's 
Yes, I'm in here. Hello. I hear my, it's so weird to hear your name at the back of the room. Like, yes, hi. Whoever said hi. Um, ADD again. Sorry. It's a, it's a theme. Uh, so, yeah, the in joke is weird. And, like, I, have, I always talk to people about Homestuck fans because actually at Winterfest, how many of you were at Winterfest? I was actually a little ashamed because I dedicated a song to Homestuck fans and got booed during the dance. And of course, there's nothing worse than a DJ because I have a microphone and the volume control. Like, come on, you're like, bah. I just. But I was like, really, you're gonna be that guy? So there is some Homestuck hatred even here in uh, Winnipeg. But uh, it's funny because when I talk to people about Homestuck fans, I think it's funny for anybody to be so angry with any fandom that they have to act up. I hate onions. But you don't see me knocking them off of people's sandwiches. Like, rah! I hate onions. We don't have onions here. Like, to me, that is what people whining about fandoms is like. It's like, oh, I hate them stuff. Well, then go watch Jiggling Boobs in the hentai room, for God's sake. It's like, there's a whole video game area. I don't think there's a Homestuck game down there. Like, so, but I did get the most interesting answer one time when I was asked about, like, I had this dude who was just Homestuck this, and I hate Homestuck. We called Homestuck fans Homestuckers. It sounded weird to me. What is the proper name for a Homestuck fan? Yeah. You call them, like, Homestuck or Homestuck. Homestucks. That sounds better than Homestucker. That sounds like some other word that I say way too much. So... <laughs> Yeah, Homestucks sounds cool because it's like, you know, Homestucks, it's like walnuts. Attack on Titan fans, walnuts. I'm gonna make that stick. I'm gonna keep working on it. Walnut, walnut. Uh, so I asked him, I was like, dude, you seem to be really upset about Homestuck. Can you explain to me why you're so upset? And I didn't expect the brilliant answer that I got back. So he said, when I, he said, I'm a nerd and I go to conventions to feel like I'm a part of something. Ding, ding, point one. Uh, but when I get to a convention and there are a group of people that want to exclude me from what's going on, just because I'm not a part of an in-joke or don't know or don't like the thing that they like and I'm excluded and made fun of, it makes me feel like an outsider. When I feel like an outsider, I tend to not like people. And I was like, hmm, okay. So, uh, I've, and since then I've, I've told this story and I met a group of people in Iowa that I love. Their Homestuck fan group is called Let Me Tell You About Homestuck, which I love. It's like the completely different approach that I normally see. Um, now, the heavens may open up and pour snakes and frogs on top of me because I just might say this character's name wrong. And it's a Homestuck character, so get ready. Butt hurt might, pers butt hurt might ensue. So there is a troll that has a walking cane. Now, I may say it wrong, get ready. I'll, I'll get my hands in crucifixion point. Terezi, is that correct? <laughs> what? I actually said the name of the character in Homestuck correct. Uh, anyway, uh, well so, Here's one of those things, again, insider joke, or maybe it was just a, a Homestuck fan that got carried away. There is a convention that I work at in Texas, and we're in a two-story, really nice, beautiful, all-glass convention center. Uh, and a group of Homestucks came running past a seeing disabled patron, grabbed her cane, and somebody said, you don't even look like Therese, and kept running. Now, there was a disabled person in the room, but it definitely was not the young girl who had had her cane snatched because she screamed security so loud, I thought I stole something. I was like, oh my God. And she's like, help, security! She just planted her feet and she didn't move. And it was the smartest thing. And of course, security loves to take things away from people that have stolen things and jump on them and <sighs> exert their power. So uh, very quickly, these, it was two of them that were ejected from the convention, but they were all set aside. And one of them was like, well, I'm a panelist. And she had her badge taken away from her. Like, So again, things that we think are funny within our own fandom or things that a group of our friends get together and talk about may not always be 
correct again. Go find a friend. Say, see that girl? I'm thinking about snatching her cane. And your friend is going to tell you what? What are you high? What are you high? That's the answer that should always come out of their mouth next. Uh, okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about has to do with My Little Pony. Uh, which, before anybody thinks I hate My Little Pony, I'm not a fan just because I haven't seen much of it. But here's why I love My Little Pony. Because every big buff friend I have in the military is a huge My Little Pony fan. Dude, okay, so my friend Joe, who's in the Navy, and another friend of mine, Steven, that's in the Air Force, they get together and they're like, I love it when Pinkie Pie talks to Flapper Jack and blah, blah, blah. Like, and I'm like, I have a Neopets account. Like, I love it. I don't feel so bad about my Neopets when I hear MLP fans go to town. So before anybody thinks I hate on my little pony, I don't. I have very good friends that are like hard, hardcore my little pony fans. Uh, so, but this is weird. This involves... My Little Pony fandom, and this is something that's awkward for me to talk about because it's weird, but there's also a group of people that are hardcore fans of certain voice actors. And I don't mean just a fan of their work. There are people that are obsessed with certain voice actors. And I'll just start this story with that. So, how many of you know the actress Jamie Markey? Jamie Markey, she's, she's Penny and Stocking, she's Witchblade, she's in a lot of stuff. She was our director for Negama. Uh, she's a very weird sense of humor, and part of her sense of humor is this condescending, arrogant, like, oh, you know you want me. Like, that's, that's her thing, that's her shtick. I am not going to defend anything she said, just for the record. But, Jamie found herself at the center of a controversy, which is now being referred to as the My Little Pony Assault of 2012. <laughs> Just say that to yourself for a second. The My Little Pony Assault of Two. That's like the Mr. Rogers beatdown of you know, 2008. This doesn't sound right at all. So, so anyway, uh, Jamie was at a convention in. Oh my God, it was Chicago. It was a different convention, but it was in Chicago. I think the moral of this story is don't point out people in Chicago. A person came through with one of the pony hoodies. You know, the ones that have the hoods that pull up and. And it was a Rainbow Dash hoodie. And she goes, oh, look, Rainbow Dash. Again, just like me, oh, look, troll. Somebody asked her if she was a My Little Pony fan. Now, I am not thinking anything she said is funny. I'm just going to repeat what she said to you, and you will be able to count the number of mistakes she made. She said, of course I love My Little Pony. I am a girl. <laughs> and I played with ponies as a child. And like most people, I always think it's fascinating when something from your childhood returns and becomes popular. Okay, she's slowly digging herself out of a grave. And then she says, and I understand there are some of you grown men that know all of their names and like to talk about ponies. And I think it's very cute that you have a hobby, but none of you are putting your penis in me. <laughs> so, Here's the weird problem with that. I know Jamie. Jamie was just trying to make a joke, even if it was a horrible joke. Jamie like, and none of you are putting your pants in me. Uh, and it got a, you know, a little titter or whatever in the room, no pun intended. Uh, but it didn't get a big ha-ha laugh, so she didn't really think much of it. Well, the weird thing is, and I even see some cameras pointed at me as we speak, Everything that we do is put on this evil, evil server called YouTube. <laughs> and you can't run away from your comments. Like, what you've said is like a Paula Deen moment forever captured in time. So, there's this video of Jamie going, of course I love my little pony, I have a girl. Of course I love my little pony, I have a girl. Well, so there's this other thing sweeping. I don't know if it's just the states. It could be the world. It's not really... Uh, it's not a disease, I don't know what you call it. It's um, not an epidemic, it's, it's butt hurt. There's a rash of butt hurt going around. Everybody's getting butt hurt on the internet, specifically on the internet. Uh, and what happened is this dude got really butt hurt about her remarks and decided he was going to attack Jamie Markey. 
where crazy people get introduced into the mix. So he started bad-mouthing her on Twitter and started attacking her on Twitter and saying he's going to kill her and blah, 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 blah. And like, when, you're, when you have a social media account, you have to take most everything that people say with a grain of salt. The first person that threatened to kill me on Twitter, I'm actually getting a tattoo to commemorate it. So I guess that's how I deal. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a tattoo for you. Uh, I'll tell you that story maybe later, but maybe the 18 and over panel, that's a great place for that story. But uh, yeah, because I didn't handle that well. So sure, that's a big shock. Uh, but so here's the weird thing. Jamie has some pretty loyal fans because she's an outspoken, very strong woman. And so a young fan was like, well, F you, you only are mad because it's true. You're probably in your mom's basement, blah. Oh my God, this is about to get very bad. So here's why this is horrible. Most people that do what we do for a living hide, like, take their privacy extremely seriously. Extremely seriously? Man, I haven't even been drinking yet. <laughs> a lot. Uh, but uh, we go to great lengths to hide our address, our phone number. Uh, people always write to me like, oh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, your phone number is on Facebook. I was like, call that number. It's, I don't think they charge by the minute anymore. Call that number. Uh, we do a really good job of hiding all that information. My boyfriend on the internet isn't even real. It's just a fictitious person, so people won't bother my real boyfriend. Uh, so, like, here's the problem. This young lady is not a voice actress. Her phone number, her address, her everything was now visible <coughs> to a total psychopath. And that's not where it ended. He got quiet.